Family, a prayer that we pray together is a powerful prayer. So please pray together with me our EWTN family prayer. Today we pray for peace. Lord Jesus, Son of God and Son of Mary, we praise and thank you. You have taught us that peace is your gift to us and have forbidden us to be troubled or afraid. Free us from anxiety, Lord. Dispel fear from our hearts and give us a deep trust in your abiding presence and in your promises. Manifest your providential care for us by meeting our needs this day and let us tangibly experience your love. Jesus, we trust in your promises. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. Do this in memory of me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Stir up the will of your faithful, we pray, O Lord, that striving more eagerly to bring your divine work to fruitful completion, they may receive in greater measure the healing remedies your kindness bestows. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Daniel said to Nebuchadnezzar, In your vision, O king, you saw a statue very large and exceedingly bright, terrifying in appearance as it stood before you. The head of the statue was pure gold. Its chest and arms were silver. Its belly and thighs bronze, the legs iron. Its feet partly iron and partly tile. While you looked at the statue, a stone, which was hewn from the mountain without a hand being put to it, struck its iron and tile feet breaking them in pieces. The iron, tile, bronze, silver, and gold all crumbled at once, fine as the chaff on the threshing floor in summer, and the wind blew them away without leaving a trace. But the stone that struck the statue became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This was the dream, the interpretation we shall also give in the king's presence. You, O king, are the king of kings. To you, the God of heaven has given dominion and strength, power and glory. Men, wild beasts, and birds of the air, wherever they may dwell, he handed over to you, making you ruler over them all. You are the head of gold. Another kingdom shall take your place, inferior to yours. Then a third kingdom of bronze, we shall rule over the whole earth. Thou shall be a fourth kingdom, strong as iron. It shall break in pieces and subdue all these others, just as iron breaks in pieces and crushes everything else. The feet and toes you saw, partly of potter's tile and partly of iron, mean that it shall be a divided kingdom, but yet have some of the hardness of iron. As you saw the iron mixed with clay tile, and the toes partly iron and partly tile, the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. The iron mixed with clay tile means that they shall seal their alliances by intermarriage, but they shall not stay united any more than iron mixes with clay. In the lifetime of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom. He shall never be destroyed nor delivered up to another people. Rather, it shall break in pieces all these kingdoms and put an end to them, and it shall stand forever. That is the meaning of the stone you saw hewn from the mountains without a hand being put to it, which broke in pieces the tile, iron, bronze, silver, and gold. The great God has revealed to the king what shall be in the future. This is exactly what you dreamed, and its meaning is sure. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Angels of the Lord, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. You heavens, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. All you waters above the heavens, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. All you hosts of the Lord, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever.
Dominus Fabiscum. Et un spiritu tuo. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Lucam. Gloria While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you not be deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Verbum Domini. In our first reading today, we hear the audience between Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king of Babylon. And to give the context of this reading, the king had been experiencing very troubling dreams, and he had summoned all of his advisors, including sorcerers, magicians, and enchanters, and he told them not only to interpret his dream, but he also wanted them to reveal what the contents of the dream were itself. So these advisors offered to interpret the dream if he would tell them what the dream was, and then they could get together and try to come up with a good interpretation. But he demanded that they prove their supernatural power, which they claimed, by being told, uh, again, by telling him not only the interpretation, but the contents of the dream. And understandably, they could not do this. In fact, they said to him, there is not a man on earth who can meet the king's demand. For no great and powerful king has asked such a thing as of any magician or enchanter or Chaldean. The thing that the king asks is difficult, and none can show it to the king except the gods, whose dwelling is not with flesh. This did not persuade the king to reveal to them what his dream had been. In fact, it made him furious, and he demanded that all of his advisors be executed because they couldn't tell him what his dream was. And we know, as we heard in yesterday's reading, Daniel and his companions had just been promoted to be the king's servants, and so they were included in this bunch of advisors that were going to be executed. And so when the king's guard came to Daniel and he found out why he was going to be killed, he immediately said, well, let's set up an appointment with the king, and I'll let him know the interpretation of it. And in the meantime, he went with his companions, and he told them to pray along with himself. Let's pray to God, asking him for his mercy and for his help. And as we know from Scripture, from Daniel chapter 2, the Lord did reveal to Daniel what the king's dream was and its correct interpretation, what God was trying to explain through this dream. So Daniel, when he did go, when was, the meeting was set up with the king, he did explain this to the king, and he used this as an opportunity to give glory and credit to God. He could have easily taken credit for himself. I'm thinking of a similar, perhaps, there, may have, there could have been a temptation with John the Baptist. Remember, when he was preaching, everyone was going to him saying, are you the Christ? Are you the Messiah? And he gave credit to the Lord. He said, no, there's one coming after me. Perhaps it could have been a similar temptation with Daniel. He could have taken credit for himself, but he said, Daniel, in fact, told the king, there is no wise man on earth who could reveal what the king had demanded, but there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries, and he has made known these things. So then Daniel explained the dream and its interpretation to the king, which we heard in today's reading. And the image of a statue made of various materials, it represented, as we heard, four different kingdoms. And a mysterious stone was cut out from a mountain by no human hand, struck the feet of the statue, and it came crumbling apart. 
And the stone is the kingdom of God that would be established and would endure forever. So we can see the statue again, not only as representing four kingdoms, beginning with Nebuchadnezzar's own kingdom, but also as the false pagan worship that these kingdoms promoted and that the kingdom of God would bring an end to them. So this account has been seen as a prophecy concerning Christ. St. Augustine put it, as he put it, we know that the stone cut from the mountain without hands is Christ, who came from the kingdom of the Jews without human father. The stone that shattered all the kingdoms of the earth, all the tyrannies of idols and devils, the stone that grew and became a great mountain and filled the whole world. And this passage has not only been seen as a prophecy concerning Christ, but also a prophecy concerning the coming of the church. St. Augustine said further regarding the church that it is that mountain which, according to Daniel's vision, grew from a very small stone till it crushed the kingdoms of the earth and grew to such a size that it filled the face of the earth. So we see in this reading again a prophecy concerning Christ and the church, but also we see in Daniel a model and example of humility, right? Again, because he, in this moment that the Lord raised him up, he gave credit to the God of heaven, the one true God. And it fits perfectly with the responsorial psalm today. Give glory and eternal praise to him. And that's what Daniel did. And then if we look at today's gospel today, we hear that some were admiring how impressive the temple looked in Jerusalem. And our Lord took that opportunity to explain to them and to speak about its coming destruction and about the end of time. Now, the temple was a very impressive sight. Herod the Great had adorned it with massive white stones, and the facade of the sanctuary was covered in gold. And it's noted that many of its stones measured nearly 40 feet in length, so it was massive. The disciples pressed the Lord after he foretold its coming destruction, asking when all this would take place. And he didn't give them an exact date because he wanted them and he wants us to always be vigilant, to always be ready. We know that the temple would be destroyed in 70 AD, but we still await his second coming. And he wants us to be prepared and not to be caught off guard when that time comes, when he calls us. And he says also in today's gospel, see that you are not deceived. So he warns about false teachers and false messiahs. That is anyone who would lead others astray from God. And St. Athanasius tells us that one great gift that our Lord gave us to protect us from being deceived is the word of God itself, is sacred scripture. You can think of the line from Psalm 119, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And St. John Chrysostom likewise referred to the books of the Bible as medicine for the soul and as a constant teacher Referring to the books of the Bible, St. John Chrysostom said, If you encounter grief, dive into them as into a chest of medicines. Take from them comfort for your trouble, whether it be loss or death or bereavement over the loss of relations. Don't simply dive into them, swim in them. Keep them constantly in mind. The cause of all evils is the failure to know the scriptures well. Right? It's the truth. It's God revealing himself, revealing the truth to us. Our Lord also warns about wars and insurrections that will precede the last days. But he says, don't be terrified, right? for such things must happen. They must take place. We are not to be alarmed, but to take heed and to be prepared. So what do we call to do simply? To keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus. He is our strength. He is our peace. And he will assist us. He'll strengthen us with the grace that we need. And it's also very good and helpful for us to ask for the grace of final perseverance. In light of Christ's teaching that wars will come and precede the last days, St. Ambrose says that there are also other wars which the Christian wages, the struggles of different lusts and the conflicts of the will. And domestic foes are far more dangerous than foreign. So it's a reminder that we're in a constant struggle, right? A constant spiritual battle. And if we want Christ to reign in our hearts, as we just celebrated the feast of Christ the King, we want him to be the king of every aspect of our lives. If we want Christ to reign in our hearts and to get to heaven, we've got to fight, right? By prayer 
and by the help of God's grace, struggling against the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Our Lord said very clearly that he who perseveres to the end will be saved. Again, we ask him for the grace of final perseverance. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus as we offer our petitions before the throne of God. That our Holy Father may faithfully lead us in the way of truth and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For refugees, immigrants, and all victims of famine, war, and natural disasters, that they may receive sympathy and practical assistance as they tried to build a new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and the consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who are drawing near to eternal life, that hope in the never-failing mercy of God may sustain and gladden their journey's end, we pray to the Lord. In your love, Lord, answer our humble prayer. Give us the grace to see what we have to do and the strength to do it. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the holy church. Accept, O Lord, the sacred offerings which at your bidding we dedicate to your name, and in order that through these gifts we may become worthy of your love. Grant us unfailing obedience to your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Amen. 
Sursum corda. Gracias agamos, Domino Deo Nostro. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them. As once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, est tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unitate Spiritu Sancti, Omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Recepti salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere, Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat enum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicud in celo. Libera no 
Dominus quasimus Domine ab omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, ut ope misericordiae tui ad iuti, et a peccato simus semper liberi, et ab omni pertabatione securi, expectantes beatam spem, et adventum salvatoris nostri, Iesu Christi. Domine Iesu Christe, quid existi apostolis tuis, pacem relinquo vobis, pacem meam do vobis, ne dispicias peccata nostra, sed fidem ecclesiae tuae, eam quae secundum voluntatem tuam, pacificari et coadunare dignieris, qui vivis et regnas in secula seculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper vobis cum. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Praise the Lord, all you nations, for his merciful love towards us is great. For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the blessed sacrament, we offer the following prayer. I believe that you, O Jesus, are in the most holy sacrament. I love you and desire you. Come into my heart. I embrace you. O oh, never, never leave me. May the burning and most sweet power of your love, O oh Lord Jesus, I beseech you, absorb my mind, that I may die through love of your love, who were graciously pleased to die through love of my love. Amen.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that those to whom you give the joy of participating in divine mysteries may never be parted from you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Ite misa est. vocations God our Father who wills that all men may be saved and comes to the knowledge of your truth we beg you to send laborers into your harvest and grant them grace to speak your word with all boldness so that your word may spread and be glorified and all nations may know you the only God in whom you have sent 
Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of